I'd like to call the regular village board meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, October 17th, 2023, and the time is 6.03 p.m. I have myself, Mike Caffers, is present. Grant Carl. Caleb Guerin. Chris Maria. Josh Heck. Chris Dubek. And I believe Donnie Kern is going to be joining us by Zoom from Sarasota, Florida. Don't see him on there yet. Okay. All right, we can do the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comment. Public uh, comment. Yeah, if you could come up here, state your name and uh, your address, and then you talk about your topic. For... Okay, I'm Margie Metzdorf, and I live at 798 Plum Tree Lane, and I'm fortunate enough to have a village walking trail right behind my place. I'm in the River Hills townhomes, and that's a really good spot for us a little more mature folks to get out and get some exercise. Um, I did want to mention there's a row of pine trees just east of that walking trail that goes from the food pantry around to Joe Casey Park. And there's a really nice stand of pine trees in there, and there's some sort of aggressive stuff growing in it that I think might be buckthorn. Mm -hmm. And if somebody who can recognize what it is wanted to look at it, I would be happy to see that happen. I'd, I'd hate to see it take over. It's encroaching a little bit on our lawn. Okay. But it's really a good spot, yeah. and I really like that walking trail. And what's your address again there? Um, um, 798, Plum Tree Lane. Okay. Bob, is that something you guys can look at? No problem. I think uh, Donnie's calling. Is he waiting? Uh, uh, I don't see him. Uh, <laughs> uh, anybody else for public comment? Nope. All right. Closing public comment. We go look at the minutes from September 19th. Gail Garen, make a motion to adopt the minutes from September 19th village board meeting as written. Brandon Chrome, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Here is uh, April, if you can uh, do your presentation from the 2022 audit, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm April Anderson from CLA, and my colleague Sarah Coves is here as well. Um, you guys might be a little more familiar with her because she's usually here on site a little bit more than I am. Um, but I am here to um, share with you the results of the 2022 audit. And so generally, the, or you, you probably got the full packet, the full audit report, um, which is a lot of useful information, but it is a little overwhelming. So we pulled together, uh, I think it's three to four pages here of the highlights that we like to go over with you. And so it is called audit report notations at the top. And so um, I won't hit on every line in here either, but um, go over the highlights that I think are necessary for you to know as the governing board of the village. So first of all, our auditor, auditor's report opinion was a qualified opinion on the governmental activities, business type activities and proprietary funds. And so what that means, and then the rest of the report has an unmodified opinion. So the unmodified opinion is the highest or clean report that you can get. Um, and the qualified opinion resulted because the GASB 68, a standard, a governmental accounting standard, wasn't implemented uh, um, within your financial statements. Um, now they make these accounting standards for all sorts of sizes and governments um, across the nation. And so um, really it doesn't affect the results of your audit and the information that you're looking at, the numbers that you're looking at. Um, and so it would have been a lot of extra work and time and effort to um, implement this standard uh, when it really didn't provide any um, real useful information or added benefit. And so again, otherwise your, your numbers are in accordance with all the governmental accounting standards that you have to follow as a governmental entity. 
The next section there, the management letter. So as we do go through the audit, we are required to communicate to you any uh, deficiencies or concerns that we see in internal control. And so here you'll see that we do report ma three material weaknesses. Um, and these are ones that have been reported in the past, so there's nothing new there. And we work with over 170 governmental entities in just Northwest Wisconsin. And most of these we report to them just due to the size and makeup and the number, the limited number of staff working um, within the financial realm of things. So the first one is limited segregation of duties as a material weakness. And so what that means is in the different um, transactional processes of accounting, so making journal entries, doing disbursements, payroll, receiving, not one person should have access to the different parts of those processes. They shouldn't be initiating the process, reconciling it, reporting on it. Again, due to the limited number of people that you have working within that, uh, within the financial realm, um, it's not possible to necessarily split everything completely. Uh, so what you have to look at there is just focus on mitigating controls that you can put in place, review of disbursements by somebody else or review of payroll by somebody else and that sort of thing. The second item that we report is material audit adjustments. And so that uh, relates to, again, I said your financial statements are in accordance with governmental accounting standards that you have to follow. However, there are a lot of different rules and regulations. And so you look to us to help with some of those um, adjustments that you have to make uh, for the PSC, for the water utility, and then for the financial reporting, because we have that kind of expertise and background in, in that area. And then the very last one is the oversight of the financial reporting process. So technically, under uh, county rules, management and governance are um, responsible for the financial statements. It takes a lot of time to pull them together, a lot of background in, in the um, knowing the accounting standards. And so you look to us to draft those financial statements. Um, again, these are very common with most of the entities that we work with because of the limited staff that you have available. So those are the high level results of the audit. And I guess I can, I'll just open it up as far as if there's any questions as we go, please feel free to, to certainly ask. Um, but now we'll move into some of the actual financial results for the year. And so the first item number two, the first one that we'll get into is your general operating fund. And so here you'll see that we show four years of information so you can kind of see maybe how, how things are trending. Um, but what we'll focus on here is um, you have the balance sheet, your assets, your liabilities, and then your fund balance, which is the net of your assets and your liabilities. Um, and so that's kind of where we focus because the fund balance is what you, what you have available um, to you. And so you'll see that your fund balance um, increased for the year by $49,471. And so that means your revenues exceeded your expenditures for the year. Um, and out of that, the, your overall fund balance um, total for the end of the year then was 962,461 in the general fund. So what we look at in that fund balance section is you can see it's broken down at the, into three different categories. Um, you have non-spendable, which is 214,000 at the end of 22, which you can see is a little bit of an increase from last year. And what that relates to is an advance that you have to your sewer utility. So your sewer utility have had a lack of cash at the end of the year. Um, and so instead of going out and getting a loan for the sewer utility, the general fund kind of loans that cash to the sewer utility for um, that time being. And so that cash is really not available um, as far as at 1231-22. Then you have assigned fund balance, which is just um, out of that fund balance, you have set aside $233 for the National Light Out Program. So those funds are, again, set aside for that purpose. You can't just use it. You're not planning to use it for any other purpose. So ultimately, what that leaves as being available is that unassigned balance, the, the highlighted numbers there. And so you'll see that your unassigned fund balance at the end of 22 was $748,000. Um, and so what we what we compare that to as a benchmark to say, what does that mean? You know, how healthy is that fund balance? Um, the unassigned fund balance to the general fund expenditures for the year is the benchmark that we kind of look at. Um, and your policy, your village policy states that you want that unassigned fund balance at least 25 percent. And the general recommendation is about 25 to 33 percent. And so you'll see the very bottom line on this first page that 
um, that 748,000 that you ended with is about 30.7% of your general fund expenditures for the year. So you're right, you're within your policy and within the general recommendation. So what that means is that you have um, in reserve or kind of built up there um, over time, uh, about three to four months of, of available resources if let's say everything else stopped. Um, it's not necessarily in cash, but um, it's available there as far as um, what, again, has built up over time. Your revenues have exceeded your, your expenditures by that point. So, again, that's um, a help. You'll see a few years ago it was down a little bit under the 25%. So you built that back up and it's at a, a good um, balance there at that 30% for the end of the year. So any questions for the general fund? Okay, we will move on then to item number three, which are your special revenue funds. And so this is where you report some of the other um, activities that you have going on here at the village. And these are considered self-sustaining funds. So you're maybe getting in certain revenues uh, for certain purposes. Um, so this, uh, what we're showing here is just the ending fund balance of these funds for the year, for each of the years. And you can see that there really isn't any major change um, from last year in most of them. Um, the, the library donations fund, obviously, a few years ago, that's come down a little bit because you had a major project there, um, got some donations and that sort of thing, and now have spent it down um, a lot. So again, really no other major changes though within those funds that you see there for your special revenue funds. So then we'll move on to your debt service fund. And this is uh, used for just that purpose. You either levy taxes into this fund or have transfers coming into this fund to pay for your principal and interest annually. So generally in this fund, you would see a minimal fund balance to zero fund balance because you're only bringing in the money that you need to pay for that principal and debt each year. Um, and so, here this year, you actually, or in 2022, you paid principal of your general obligation debt of 1.7 million and 98,000 of interest out of this fund for the year. Um, and that was, the principal was a little bit higher and we'll see this a little later uh, because you paid off some TID debt that you had outstanding. Um, and so that's why it was 1.7 million. And then you just have a, a small amount there for your balance of 10,000 to be used to pay um, for future principal and interest. Then in item number five are your capital projects funds. And here we see a bit more change from year to year um, due to the nature of these funds, because usually it's bringing in funding or issuing debt um, for certain capital projects that don't necessarily occur year over year. Um, and so the tax incremental fund just or, uh, fund is number number two is uh, was closed in 22. So that's why that balance was brought down to zero. Um, and that's where that debt was also paid paid off is that um, the the funds from that closure helped pay tip for debt. Um, tax incremental district number three. Uh, saw a big increase. And again, that kind of related to TID number two being closed out and it was a donor TID to TID number three. So you moved some funds over there that were available. And then TID number four um, did have a little bit of a deficit. It's generally run a deficit for the last few years. Um, and then I guess TID number two had brought some funds over to that TID to have it at zero. Uh, balance at 2020 and 2021, and this year it had a, a deficit balance. And so that's very common for TIDs to have deficit balances sometimes because you um, you put in that funding and you to build up and have that economic development uh, for future tax increments to cover it. So it's common that sometimes you'll have deficits like that to be recovered by the future tax increment. And then your last to there is number five, which uh, was just created in 2021. And so you'll see that that balance um, had, was created in 2021 and is at a good balance at the end of 2022. And then the your Apple River Bridge improvements, you've uh, spent down a little bit of that in the last couple of years, but no real major change from the last year and that balance. And then the last one is your other capital improvement. So here you do um, sometimes levy some funding in there annually for certain capital improvements and um, purchases. 
And so there is a deficit there at the end of 2022, but that's expected to be recovered in 2023 as you um, bring in some of that tax levy for the purchases that were made in 2022. So those are all your governmental funds. And the next page shows your utility funds. And so here we, um, we show a little bit more detail of the activity, but I'm, I'm just gonna actually uh, focus in on some of the bottom uh, lines in each section. So your first utility is the water utility. Um, and there you'll see that the change in net position or kind of the, your ending net position for the year, you added $237,000 to your net position there, or your revenues exceeded your expenditures by $237,000. So um, that's, that's positive there. It did include about $80,000 of a contribution, but otherwise the rest of it was really um, for actual operating revenues exceeding your operating expenditures. You'll see that the current ratio there is 1.3. And so what that is, is your current assets, your available cash, current receivables, um, compared to your current liabilities. And so you want that to be at least a one to one ratio and it's that, that 1.3. So again, you, you have available cash to pay for your current liabilities. Um, the one other thing that I don't have summarized on here, but I did um, note is that your water utility is regulated by the Public Service Commission and they do a calculation of a rate of return, it's called. So your, your assets, your infrastructure, and how um, your operating revenues compare to that. Um, and so you had a rate increase back in 2021 and the rate of return goal is 5% and in 2022, it was 7.818%. So um, your, your rates are obviously doing, as they increase in 2021, um, they are at the level to recoup um, what you need to, to uh, provide the services and continue to improve that infrastructure and keep it up to date. Um, because a few years ago, it was at like a negative 2% um, in 2020 and a negative 0.9% in 2019. So again, the rates um, were brought up to, to help with that rate of return. Then you have your sewer utility is your last fund that you report uh, activities in. And again, well, um, the one the one line item I guess I was going to point out here in the, your balance sheet. Um, so you have your assets and then your liabilities there. You'll see that your current liabilities is at 1.2 million at the end of 2022, uh, pretty high compared to the rest of the years. And that is simply just due to timing and that you have a pro you had a project the project going on at the end of the year, and so you had a um, construction uh, contract payable to uh, the contractor at the end of the year. So that's what that related to was the wastewater treatment plant upgrades. So here we look at uh, similar uh, things as far as the change in that position at the end of the year. Uh, your revenues in the sewer utility exceeded the expenditures by 300,000. Um, and about 290,000 of that was actual contributions or like developer contributions, grant type contributions. And so, um, you, you really had a minimal operating income versus your operating expenditures of about $10,000. Um, and so here you'll see that the current ratio, which this is pretty common that we see in sewer utilities is that the, the current assets um, compared to the current liabilities aren't, it's not quite as liquid as the water utilities. So oftentimes um, the sewer utility does run a little bit under the one-to-one -one ratio that we do like to see there. Um, and here, your last rate increase was 2018. So again, I think it's something to maybe just keep our eyes on as far as um, where the next year or two might go with that is in looking at the rates for that. So that was the summary of all the different funds and activities that the, the village has. Uh, the last thing that we like to summarize here for you to just kind of be aware of and know about is the long-term obligations that the village has outstanding um, to pay into the future. And so the top portion is your general obligation debt. And so this is backed by your tax levy. Um, and you'll see that uh, that did go down quite a bit because um, of that payoff of that TID debt that you had. Um, so again, with the closure of the one TID, you helped pay off some of that old debt um, there. And so the every village municipality in the state, county, school district, 
has a general obligation debt limit. Um, in for a village, it's five percent of your equalized value. And so down at the bottom, the best, the bottom couple lines there, you'll see um, that the outstanding general obligation debt that you have, two point five million at the end of the year, is um, fourteen point nine percent of your overall debt limit. Um, so you you have room there if you wanted to issue more debt, you could. Um, in this sense. Uh, the villages and cities that we work with in Northwest Wisconsin generally average about 40% usage. Um, some obviously go higher and then you guys are obviously at, at the lower end there. So um, you have some flexibility there if, if need be. Um, and I did note that a few years back prior to 2019, you were as high as even 60% usage of that debt limit. So you've really brought that down to a good level. Then the other uh, section there that we showed, the other long-term debt that you have is mortgage revenue bonds. And so that is backed by the actual user rates for your water and sewer utility. Um, and so that did go up a little bit with the clean water fund loan that you had issued and took some money out on uh, for the project that you have going on in the sewer utility. Um, and then there's some release, lease related items uh, that you have with minimal change from last year in that balance. And then the employee vacation sick leave as far as what your employees earned to be paid out into the future for usage of that time off. Um, and that was estimated at 236,000 at the end of the year. So as I said, those are the highlights and key points that we feel are necessary for us to share with you um, when we're thinking about the audit and the um, key pieces of financial information. So. April, okay, so this is the rest of it? Yeah, well, this is, yes, from there. Uh, again, lots of useful information, but can be kind of overwhelming. And um, a lot of people joke that it's good nighttime reading before bed <laughs> to put you to sleep. But um, if you do ever look at it and have questions, certainly feel free to reach out. If, um, What's the best way to get a hold of you in April? Uh, well, Andrea should have our our numbers and um, email. So either okay. either so one. CLAConnect.com. Yep. Yeah, you can look it up on there too. So. Great. So I do have some things that I don't quite understand that I would like a little clarification okay. on. So. Yeah, certainly. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank Does you. Anybody have any questions for April? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, April. Thanks. Have a good evening. Yeah. Many reports. Planning Commission, the October 5th and October 12th meeting reports. Uh, when is Capstone planning on having a retooled development plan? They're here. They arrived right. yesterday. 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 Okay. Okay. Yes. There's copies on the back. No. On the top. On the top. Okay. I shall review those. Take one with me. Can I send those digitally? I forwarded the link this afternoon for the files. Josh, I'd like to make a motion to receive the minutes for October 5th and October 12th. Real second. Chris Real second. Any discussion? Any none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Discussion, possible approval, the rezone of parcel 181-1000-95-000 from residential R3 zoning district to uh, industrial I-1. That is the uh, Eric Wolf. Just out of curiosity, could you tell us where that parcel is? Uh, 
Right there. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Yeah. Right by the old combo house behind it. Across from the car wash. Yeah. Right and church house. Brickfield. Assuming that was approved at Planning Commission. It was. Mm -hmm. Josh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the rezoning parcel of 181-1000-95-00 for residential R3 zoning district to industrial I1. Caleb Garden, second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Yeah. Public Works, October 11th meeting report. So you have our engineering update in your packet. I don't know if there's any specific questions. Uh, you know, River Hills is paved now. And we have a few punch list items and things, but uh, you know, that's uh, Looks nice. The neighbors, everyone loves up there. Yeah. We're very happy. Good to hear. Completed. They were working pretty late. Maybe until like eight, nine o'clock some night. So appreciate getting it done. Yeah. Especially in these days where we don't have a lot of daylight hours after. Um, you know, they're, they're still working on uh, the utilities underneath the bridge. You know, that uh, yeah, that won't be done by this weekend. And is this weekend when you have your uh, yeah. Yes. So unfortunately there will be bypassing sewer. <clears throat> What will that mean for the event other than the the equipment, the pumps, the water pumps on the sidewalk? Just the north side of the walkway won't be accessible. Like and then the equipment will be on that lot. Like I, I, I asked him to tighten it up. So I talked to Joel and I was And they did, have they done the markings for the any? I didn't see any. And I don't recall. No, so. we were waiting for permission from the board. To do the diggers hotline yeah we didn't know if we were allowed to do that without asking first um i would as soon as we get off the meeting back if you could make that call and uh get that going it's sooner than later usually uh what's the turnaround time for three day clearance three days so and it's i think it's a 24-hour hotline so we can yep. Any, call now and or uh, when we're done with the meeting back on Get that going. Thank you. Uh, so, other than the north side of the sidewalk, will those pumps be running? Will they be loud? I guess they're not too loud, but they'll be running. I mean, when, yeah, they'll be running. Okay. Do they smell? No. Okay. Some really big trash pumps, but they're. Quiet. There. Anything else that will uh, will affect the celebration on Saturday? Well, I correspond with Chris a little bit today. Wilson Sanitation is donating the trash receptacles and recycling receptacles for this event. So that was nice. They'll dump them at the end on Monday and collect them. Um, they'll bring them Friday afternoon. To that. Becca, how many people are you anticipating for Saturday's celebration? There's no way to really know. We think hundreds. The dweebs usually bring people in. So. And say the times again, it was 11 to 4? 11 to 4. Dweebs play 1 to 4. Parades at 1. Urban cutting ceremony and VIPs are at noon. And then we're encouraging everybody to eat lunch downtown at all the different eateries starting at 11. Then we've got booths over in Dick's from 11 to 4 as well. And the bridge will get shut down from what time to what time? 1 o'clock. And I think Kathy thinks that the parade will be about half an hour or less because it's a driving parade only. So from like 1 to 1.30, the, the bridge is shut down? Yeah. It'll depend on how many people, you know, line up. but. That's what Kathy and Bart are planning. 
Okay. And then I've uh, worked with, you've worked with public works for signage and stuff to get people around. Chris, has the public works done anything with that? No, actually. Or public safety, I was thinking, but public works to help put out signs or anything? Yeah. No, we will, we will discuss that. Okay. Um, I'll double check. Okay. Yeah. So should Becca coordinate directly with Joel maybe on that and then yeah, Joel work with me and Jim so that's fine. Okay. Becca, could you work with uh, Joel directly on that and then Joel will connect with uh, with Bob and Jim for whatever signage and whatever would be needed to uh, detour people around for that. Hey, you're talking about Chief Trepchik? Correct. Yep. And I, because he and I also have to connect finally on uh, any kind of barricades that he needs as well. So that map I'm working on tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Where are we at? Do you want to keep going, Chuck, or do you want to? Oh, sure. Should we approve the uh, Should we approve the minutes from the eleventh first, or no? Yeah. Let me keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, next, we have a comprehensive outdoor recreation plan update. It was last done in 2018, so it's year five. We have to update it five years from now, and what the corp does it keeps you eligible for potential grants. And, uh, you know, uh, the scope of services is attached to the task order. You know, this is for $3,250. Uh, you know, we would basically look at all the parks, you know, we'll determine what's been done since previously. You know, we would meet with Public Works. Public Works is committed, I believe, or at least the, the village would put out a, a web-based survey for your residents, thanks. So, Get solicit their comments and what you know what they want to see, and then you know essentially update the map and the narrative and the document, and then you know present present the document to all the, the plan commission, public works, as well as the village board. And you know after talking with over public works, it was decided to you know the completion date would be you know, pushed out to March first of next year. Public works was recommending approval. So should we are we on B1? Should we approving the, the discussion? Oh, the mode. I'm budget. sorry, I jumped over the budgets. That's right. My apologies. Can I approve those budgets? <laughs> so I, I guess I'll backtrack and I don't know. Bob, mm -hmm. are you taking the budget? What we're gonna do is approve it. I don't think that's on there. Or um, it's on there, but Andrea wanted it off for to be it in November. Got table until November. Yeah, table until November. Oh, okay. Okay. In which but can case, we, you want to go back up and do them? Yeah. The minutes. Somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes or receive the minutes from October 11th for public works? Okay, we're going to make a motion to approve the minutes for the public works meeting from October 11th, 2023. Frank Crone, second. Discussion? There are none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And then you're uh, good on your court plan there. I guess I'm looking for a uh... We're looking for approval of looking the, for approval of the uh, professional services of the three thousand or the thirty-two fifty. Yep. Donnie uh, Kern, so moved. Cool. second. Any discussion? I think it's uh I think it's necessary for us to be able to apply for any grants and or so this is definitely something that's needed and we should start working on it as soon as we get approval. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Discussion possible approval of wastewater treatment facility improvements, pay app number 14, and the amount of 
$255,710.55. This was discussed at Public Works and it will be to Staff Construction Corporation and it was recommended for approval. Yeah, just one thing to note on this is they are um, going over slightly on their uh, substantial completion date. So they're, they're uh, entering into agreements for the um, penalty for that. So that will be taken care of. So, can, Brandon, can you kind of give a timeline of how far they're going to go? Uh, so did we end up getting one? I know we said they were going to miss substantial completion, but did we get a date? Yes, we, we had a date back at the last public works meeting. November 17th. November substantial, 17th. right? Okay. So that pushes it back two weeks and about three weeks. So it's supposed to be done two weeks prior to what it's going to be. Yep. It's supposed to be a substantial completion the 13th of October. Oh, so it is. It's almost a month. Last month. Last one month. month. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt, Brandon. Nope, it's, it's, uh, it's a 35 day extension. Uh, Brandon Crum make a motion to approve the $255,710.55 for um, pay app 14. Good job. You have a second? Chris Marino. Chris Marino with the second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Discussion possible approval of Main Street Bridge pay app number three in the amount of $28,838.68. Yes, this was also recommended uh, for approval uh, to Lunda Construction Company, and it's for work completed in September. And... Brandy Crown, make a motion to approve $28,838.68. Is there a second? Second. second. Caleb, Caleb Garns, second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Discussion possible approval Spring Street and Main Street improvements. Pay app number three, the amount of $291,157.73. Also recommended for approval by the Public oh, Works Committee. Hail Baron McMosin. To uh, approve pay app number three, the amount of $291,157.73. Chris Marino with the second. Uh, discussion? No, no, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Discussion, possible approval, growing wings, pay app number one. Yes, yeah, so pay app number one is for. $183,347.39. Can you give that at $180,000? And this did not make it to public works. It's for work in September, and so there was no uh, formal recommendation from public works, but we are, you know, it's is for work completed and we are recommending approval this evening. Chuck, what was the, it, 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 that was a, just a, a, pro, a progressive payment, right? To start the work? Well, it includes work. It includes, yeah, the majority of the work. So how much of that is, 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 uh, is that payment for? <laughs> The original contract was $250,000. Thank you. I'll recommend approval. Donnie Kern, make a motion to approve. Pay a second. Josh, Josh Heck with the second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposing sign, motion carries. Can I ask a quick question? Um, were we still going to get the fencing done on the bridge That's at it. some point? Uh, when is that going to be done? Bridge? Yeah, I thought we were doing the black fencing. But was that? No, oh, never mind. mind. That's okay. what I thought too. I asked earlier. Oh, okay. So I, thought, I thought it was going to be like 160,000 just to just an engineer or something. All right. Mm -hmm. Public safety. Um, we can go 
through the October 9th meeting report minutes. Okay. All right, Chris Murillo, I'll uh, make a motion to approve the meeting minutes as written. Second that. Uh, Chris Marino was first, and I think uh, Brandon Chrome was first or second with first with the second. First second. First with the second. Uh, any discussion on that? Three none. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Discussion possible approval of the purchase of two. APX 4000 portable radios from uh, Baycom Incorporated for the amount not to exceed $6,000. Chris, were these ones Chief wanted? Yes. Yes. But they wanted three, but I figured uh, it being that people, everybody's kind of been pinching at that. We, we, uh, we kind of thought that they could get by with the two. And use the best, the best one out of the seven they have. They should yeah. at least one out of the seven and then two, whenever there's three people on, which is very long. Yeah. Would somebody like to make a motion? Josh, I'd like to make a motion for the approval for purchase of two APX 4000 portable radios from Baycom for a mouth not to exceed $6,000. Second. Uh, Josh Eck with the first, Caleb Garn with the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sign. Motion carries. Discussion possible approval. Temporary Class B wine retailer's license for the Somerset Chamber of Commerce for the Winter Wonderland event on November 3rd and 4th, 2023. This was approved through uh, public, safety. public safety. City. Would anybody like to make a motion? Make motion. To approve the temporary Class B wine retailer's license for the Somerset Chamber of Commerce Winter Wonderland event on November 3rd and 4th. Brandon Crone, second. Doctor, second. Caleb Garn with the first. Uh, Brandon Crone with the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Discussion possible approval. Recommend the approval of hiring a full time officer in the 4507 position contingent upon successful completion of a pre employment screenings. Is 4507 the officer's number? Number, correct. Yeah. To be the seventh full time officer for the village, correct. Brandon Crown make a motion to approve, um, recommend approve hiring full time officer 4507 position. Contingent on successful completion of pre employment screenings. Second. Brandon Crown with the first, Caleb Garn with the second. Any discussion? This was recommended by uh, Public Safety? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, finance and personnel. Between the, look at the Minutes from October 4th and October 11th. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Crown make a motion to approve October 4th and 11 finance personnel meeting minutes. Brandon Crown with the first. Is there a second? Josh Heck. Josh Heck with the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Discussion, possible approval, village assessor proposal. It looks like Mike is on here. Bomar. Oh, or Inc. Okay, if you can uh, tell us who you are, Mike. Yeah, Mike Coche with Bomar Appraisal. I run the Eau Claire 
office. Um, we handle about 40 communities in Northwestern Wisconsin. Um, I believe we were the assessor for Somerset back in the 80s and 90s until Jerry Coonan passed away. Um, he had to give it up. But uh, we handle communities around Somerset. Um, we're the village assessor for North Hudson, City of Hudson, St. Croix Falls, and other communities around the area. Um, we proposed a two-year maintenance assessment contract, um, basically taking care of the building permits, um, reviewing all the sales, getting all the reports into the DOR, and conducting open book and uh, board review hearings. Um, no uh, reval in the near future for your village. Um, so it's just basically maintenance assessment work. Um, and we'd like uh, you to consider our company for uh, the future assessment position. Did you make everyone's taxes go down? Yeah. <laughs> sure. And I'm guessing this is the only proposal we got. It is. Ah, okay. Did we put it out for bid or how did that work? Yeah, she went down? out for with RFP stuff for several weeks, I think at least two or three. Yeah. Right. Well then Brandon Crown make a motion to approve Bauman Baumar appraisals. For our new village assessor, Chris Marino, second. Brandon Crum was the first. Chris Marino was the second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. Motion carries. The fire rescue September report. It's Mike. <coughs> Josh. What? The, <laughs> the, I'll just skim it over. The, this month, uh, Somerset Fire Rescue responded to 40 calls for service. Breakdown as follows 20 calls in the village, consisting of 15 medicals and five fire rescue calls, 11 in the township, consisting of eight medicals and three fire rescue calls, and nine auto aid calls, six in St. Joe, one in Richmond, one in Hudson, and one in Star Prairie brings the total runs to 335 for the year compared to 341 for the same time last year in 2022. Um, still waiting on the new electric truck, which is already all paid for by their private funds. And oh, currently operating with 21 members, 16 full-time, 16 full members, five probationary members, and they're hoping to uh, grow their staff in the future. And uh, they always welcome people to stop by and say hi whenever anybody's around. What does this uh, four to five insurance thing mean? Where are you at, Brennan? It says uh, the third paragraph down recently met with ISO regarding the town and village insurance classification. The town the same, however, the village has dropped from a four to a five. So up is worse. I've been included on these emails and it's it's kind of going back and forth. It's the something about the number of trucks available per to be able to go up for calls. It sounds like nothing has really changed, but he's working on trying to get that that ISO uh, classification back to where it should be. <clears throat> Sounds good. The unfinished business under number seven. New business discussion possible approval ordinance two one five. Official newspaper of the village. And uh, Tasia, if you can take this one. Yeah, so I um, put this on the agenda um, just after my first few months here, noticing some of the costs coming in um, with publications of things that aren't required by state statute. I wanted to dig a little bit further. Um, and some of those things are meeting minutes and um, hearing notices. Some things are required by state statute, but we are publishing things that aren't necessarily required. Um, so I did a little bit of thinking about what we have spent so far in the last few years and then so far this year. Um, and it's a several thousand dollars a year, so not not a ton, but uh, enough to look at if it's not necessary spending. Um, with that, I reached out to 
the Star Observer um, to see how many subscribers they have in our area. And they report by zip code, which they report 69 subscribers um, for, our zip code. for our zip code. And uh, the US Census Bureau reports that there's about 2,900 households um, in this zip code. So also realizing that doesn't just count for the village of Somerset, there's other municipalities. So seems like it maybe isn't quite a good bang for our buck anymore. Um, on top of that, the ordinance currently states our official papers in Richmond News, which doesn't exist anymore. So I reached out to Paul um, to see what we might be able to do and she recommended some board discussion around it. <clears throat> so, you know, I think Tara pointed this out in, in her memo, you don't have to have an official newspaper where it comes into play with publications if the statute says if you do have an official newspaper then you have to publish in that paper and since there's no newspaper published within the village of somerset you have the option of not having an official paper and so you can change your ordinance to remove that um you may save some money if, uh, can we change you. can we change the ordinance instead of a newspaper to our official village website? As a well, that's what you will use. If you don't have the newspaper, you'll put it on the website, mm -hmm. you'll post it. Yeah. And statute already defines yeah, that's what we're doing yeah. already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because because we can just change changes the ordinance like that. Yeah. Because you have one designated, you had to use it. So, so we needed a, a motion to abolish. Our current commander to amend the ordinance, mm -hmm. yeah, just to abolish that oh. section of your ordinance that designates an official. So that's all we can abolish ordinance 2 1 5. Okay, we're going to make a motion to abolish ordinance 2 1 5. Donnie Kern, second. <laughs> Caleb Garden with the first, Donnie Kern with the second. And then I guess my question is so. Does ordinance 2-1-5 have anything else in it other than the publication? It does not. It does not. It does, covers it, so we can abolish that whole yeah. ordinance and then we're good. Any further discussion? If there are none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank good work, KJ. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Good job. Good money. A little fun. discussion, possible approval, street use permit. And this is an amendment for the chamber for for Saturday's event, correct, uh, Becca? Becca, are you still on with us? She's there. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you now. If you just want to okay. kind of give a quick little uh, update, uh, we got this on the agenda because there was uh, some changes that needed to be made for Saturday's celebration. So if you can give a quick rundown of that, Becca. Sure, so um, we still have Parent Street blocked off, but we are now moving the stage to RCU's um, parking lot. So as soon as the parade is done, that street can open back up. Um, I didn't know at the time that we put in the street permit that if we would need permission to decorate the bridge, which has been something we've been planning. I needed to know if that's still okay. They want to do that on Friday. Um, the is lot gonna, was- You're going to need traffic, uh, traffic, uh, you know, clearance on something like that? Or are you able to work off I of think, the- I think they were going to work from the bridge side, but I think if I heard correctly, Bob said one of the sides is not going to be open. Did I That's hear that correctly? Asking, are you gonna are you gonna be working on the sidewalk or are you gonna be working in 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 traffic? The understanding is they're going to be on the sidewalk, but they were going to Kathy Ness was gonna reach out to Chief Trepcheck and just discuss that with him how the best way to do that was. Be Becca, I guess I'm not understanding correctly. So the Will will the decoration just be on the sidewalk sides or in the middle of the road or what are we? No, no, just just lining the bridge and connected to like the railing with zip ties. It's fabric. 
Nobody will be out in traffic. Nothing that we need traffic direction or anything for. It's, it's just, my understanding, uh, but Kathy Ness is heading that up. And like I said, she was in talk to Chief Trepchek. So um, you'll have to forgive me. I do not have the paperwork in front of me. What did what did I put on there for an amendment? I believe you were looking for an hour before and after for street use. And it just says also, uh, okay. bridge, also bridge de decorating is kind of decorating. Yep. So let's see. Thank you. Um, to extend to allow us to work with the stage and tent vendors at this point, um, this actually may be unnecessary. I'm not sure because RCU did give us permission to move the stage. When I turned this in, we needed time to set the stage up before 11 o'clock. So, um, you know, I think the only thing that we really needed to know is if we could mark the parking lot and stake in the in the lot over by wheelhouse, and then if they're still allowed to decorate the bridge. Uh, Becca, I would say, yeah, as soon as as soon as you get done with this meeting, uh, call Diggers Hotline, uh, give them the address to that. I think it's one twenty eight Main Street. Twenty eight Main Street. Correct. And then uh, they'll ask, you know, which area is the lot. You can tell them the whole lot minus around the equipment. That's is that equipment going to move at all, Bob? That's there now. Yeah. Or just have them line the whole lot. Yeah. I have them mark the whole lot. I would. Yeah. yeah. The whole lot. Ask them to mark the have whole mark lot. Have them mark the whole lot. Okay. Main Street. And then uh, so the beta use is this Saturday. Are you still asking? For the event set up on Parrot Street from a certain time to a certain time, or now that it's moving to RCU parking lot, are you just looking to close down Parrot Street from like one to one thirty during the parade, or what are you what are you asking of the board? Um, the Parrot Street uh, usage should stay the same, other than we'll be done with it sooner than we thought we were going to be. Eight a.m. to eleven a.m. Yep. For the event setup. Is that correct? Yes. And then uh, clean up. Ignore the ignore the cleanup and the takedown because, like I said, we'll have that done be, like before the before four o'clock. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that question. Um, I just said oh, okay. It looks. Uh, there's, so there's not much changes for that. And then if I remember correctly from our conversation, you were just looking to add the open intoxicant usage to that lot and and um, Parent Street and the RC parking lot. Is that correct? So I don't I don't yeah, see it. Wasn't that already approved? That was in the original one. But yeah. all I thought she was extending it to another lot, or is that not? No, well, it runs from Parrot Street oh, no, no, to no. the west side, like towards my happy place. Great. Would anybody like to make a motion? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the amendment to the street use permit for the chamber conference. Josh Hecker first, Caleb Garment second. Any further discussion? Yes. Does this include uh, decorating of the bridge and the street use, or is, is that a separate item? Well, that's what I wasn't clear on. Do we need a street use permit for the decorating of the bridge? If we do, then yes. Well, we, only we if you're that. using this. Only if you're using the street and shutting it down. But if if you're not impeding traffic, if you're going to stay on the sidewalks, I don't think that that could be dealt with in a different issue. Okay. I believe it's all going to be done from the sidewalk. Yeah, and it, that's it's in this. It's in the street use permit. They do have it also bridge decorating. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. My understanding, Kathy use. Ness is heading this up. She's on our committee and the Somerset Champions. She was going to reach out to Chief Trepchak. I gave him her number tonight to just see if it, like, if they needed to like step over or something, if they had cones to put out, or if they can, they just, if it's possible to do it just from the sidewalk side but my understanding is it's just the sidewalk side she was going to talk to joel though 
just to double check on safety issues. We want to add some kind of amendment to say that along with uh, approval of, of Joel, of Chief Trepchek's recommendations for public safety of decorating the bridge. Decorating the bridge, yeah. Um, sure. I will have that, yes. Any further discussion? <laughs> There, the second, there needs to be a second, the second to that amendment if, if Josh is amending his oh, Second. Caleb Garner with the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. So, okay. Thanks, Becca. And then, uh, yeah, call Diggers hotline right away because uh, time is uh, kind of running out for them to be able to get out here and take care of that. Got it. Thanks, guys. And go. Uh, discussion possible approval resolution designated designated allocation of the West Central Wisconsin Biosolids Facility Commission's review bonds to municipalities for bank qualification so. purposes. I don't either. <laughs> so, if anybody's got any questions, they know a little bit about this. This is just for the piggybacking on the tax exemption. Yeah. Every, all the municipalities are allowed 10 million a year uh, to do this. And what this will do uh, will allow the biosolids facility to get cheaper financing. And in the long run, because you're going to pay the bill for all that, uh, it'll save the village money because the financing will be cheaper. So the bill will be cheaper. This is not full faith and credit of the village. It's just under your contractual obligation for the South facility. So. I'd like Kronk. to make a motion to approve the resolution as presented. Brandon Crone, second. Donnie, Co Donnie Kern with the first, Brandon Crone with the second. Any discussion? Just one Here's question not. on that. I just, this just come to us tonight. Uh, is there any concerns with this uh, or was this posted uh, uh, give proper notice? Um, I think it was, I don't, I think the information was sent out tonight, but it's been on the agenda since. Uh, that's all, that's all I needed to know. Thank you. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. For a resolution, you should do it. Okay. So since it is a resolution, let's do a roll call. Uh, we can start with Brandon. Brandon Crone, aye. Caleb Garn, aye. Chris Marino, aye. Mike Capper's aye. Josh Hack, aye. Chris Dubeck, aye. Donnie Kern, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion, possible approval, resolution changing the November Village Board meeting. Date to Tuesday, November 14th. Caleb Garner makes a motion to change the official village, village board meeting to Tuesday, November 14th, 2023, for the month of November. Brandon Crone, second. There's a first and a second. Any further discussion? And the reason basically is to not go for Thanksgiving week. All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's a resolution. Opposed? Same side. Oh, it's a resolution. So, Brandon Crone, aye. Caleb Garner, aye. Chris Marino, aye. Mike Capper's aye. Josh, aye. Chris Dubeck, aye. Don Kerr, and aye. Motion carries. The resolution change changes. Okay, we'll go through the village water and sewer bills. Brandon Crone, make a motion to approve the village water and sewer bills as presented. Second. Brandon Cohn with the first, Caleb Garn with the second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Brandon Cohn, motion to adjourn. Brandon Cohn with the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Josh Heck. Josh Heck with the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned at 7.06 p.m. Thank you guys. Perfect.